to uh, some basics of creating a custom object. In this case, there was uh, this uh, the sconce that was sent to me, um, and uh, there was a DWG cut sheet. Uh, I didn't see any 3D blocks, but um, there's a little bit more that we want to do with this. So first of all, I've modeled that 3D sconce from their CAD block, uh, and then this is what we want the 2D plan symbol to look like. So this is all drafted with lines and fills. I've also added a hotspot uh, right here at the base, and that's going to come in uh, when we actually go to building this object out with the custom 2D symbol. For the 3D symbol, notice the project zero, the project origin, zero, 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 X, Y, Z origin, uh, sits right at the back of the base, uh, and that's useful um, when we get into combining these scripts. Uh, it's also vertically orientated so that the center of this back plate is directly on that zero axis on the Z axis. Um, all of this stuff does get saved uh, relative to um, the final 2D and 3D scripts of these elements. Um, ARCHICAD does like to shift things over so that the leftmost and bottommost piece, uh, when it saves, it's going to push it up so that it's all in the positive quadrant. Uh, but we're going to null those commands uh, so that we can combine these two things and get them to line up. The first thing we want to do is verify that the 3D looks right. Uh, I've modeled this with shells. Shells are really efficient when you model uh, and save as a GDL object uh, because it's just the revolved profile of, of that uh, polygon that we've created. Uh, so there's a handful of shells in here to create this. You can model this with beams, columns, walls, morphs. Uh, morphs are probably some of the least efficient to save out. Um, it's also important that the surfaces are unique where they need to be. So the, the shade here, I've set that at light gray. The uh, general metal surfaces, I've set those to stainless. And there's this little black bulb piece in here uh, that I've set that as another, uh, uh, another surface. Um, I've also set all of the pens to be uniform um, so that I don't have a bunch of different pens in the final object. So all of the pens, all of the uh, fills, any other attributes, you want to make sure that those are preset and unique where they need to be before we save out anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, review it uh, and then go to File, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as Object. Uh, and here I'm just going to put it in the embedded library for right now. Uh, let me double check. So this is Bryant Sconce uh, is what I'm going to save this as. Um, whatever the name needs to be there. Uh, now this is where having those surfaces set before you save is really critical. If they were all using the same surface, I wouldn't have individual control over the surfaces in the final object. Uh, so the, uh, the stainless, for example, this is the fixture surface. Um, the black is the bulb uh, housing. And the light gray is the shade surface. Um, and then the pens, making sure that you don't have uh, a ton of extra pens, usually pen 19 or whatever, the white pen, that's the cut fill pen. Uh, oops. And then pen one, that's going to be uh, the uncut line pen. Uh, make sure we don't have any typos. And all of this can be edited and adjusted in the final object. I do want to go change details. And here I'm going to say set preview. And I grabbed a screenshot when I was creating this object uh, as a reference. But that also is the preview thumbnail for the final object. Um, I can put my initials in here so people know who messed it up. Um, uh, if there's anything wrong with it, who to contact. Uh, this is, uh, you can add a description in here, give it a date, whatever. The keywords make this searchable, so I can say that this is a Brandt wall sconce, light. Uh, anyway, so anything that we want to be searchable, I add those keywords in there, and then say change, and then OK. Now, the next thing that I always do is I place that resulting object. Uh, now, this is going to be my, be my quick reference for the 3D component of this object. Uh, if I look at that compared to what was saved, um, you can see here that here's the object, here's the series of shells. Looking at the object now, uh, I get that preview thumbnail, I get uh, under custom settings, I get all of the building materials, surfaces, all of that stuff in here um, that I've set. Uh, and that makes that uniquely editable in the final object. So if the shade surface needs to change, for example, uh, changing it here is going to change in the final object. Um, 
The next step, I want to take the 2D component. Uh, so this is drafting, uh, drafted line work, lines, fills, whatever. Uh, notice that this is just the 3D projection. It matches what was saved out. Uh, the scale of this thing is different. Uh, so this is going to come into play. Uh, I've shifted this over so that the origin is at 0, 0. Uh, I select these elements. Uh, you can see here I've got one arc, uh, five polylines, and a hotspot. Uh, I ensure that all of the attributes for those are also uh, going to be the same pen type. Uh, and then I go to File, uh, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as Object. And here, I'm just going to save this as uh, temp2d because I don't actually need this object. It's just to develop this script, so I don't have to think about what the script is for lines and fills and arcs and whatever else <coughs> I needed to build this. Uh, just like I did with the other one, I'm going to then place this as an object. Now, notice that, uh, that hotspot right there. Uh, that is because there was a hotspot in that object when I saved it. Um, otherwise, you would only get the four corners and the center. Now, all of these are also stretchable, which I probably don't want for a manufacturer-specific object, and I definitely don't want the 3D to stretch and distort to my 2D. So I select the two objects that I've placed. I open them. Uh, now, the shortcut for that on my computer is Command-Option-O, or you can go to File, Libraries and Objects, and Open Object. It's going to warn you that there's multiple objects. I'm going to say Open All. Those are the selected objects I have there. So here's my temp2d, and here's my sconce. These are the, uh, the GDL editing uh, window uh, components. Here I'm going to go to my 2d script, the 2d tab right here. I'm going to select everything all the way up to these exclamation marks. Now those exclamation marks are null commands. Any line starting with an exclamation mark is going to be voided. I'm going to copy this come back into my 3D part, and notice there's a lot of script here, a lot more script for um, this projection. Uh, what I want to do is just take that whole thing, delete it, and paste in this script. Uh, the next thing to do is these add lines have to go, and the mole line has to go. Otherwise, things are going to get resized differently for 2D and 3D. Either the 2D is going to be distorted down, or the 3D is going to get distorted up, depending on which was pasted into where. I can use this little comment command, and that nulls out those lines. I have to then do the same thing for the 3D script. I come in here, and notice there's more of them. Uh, I want to null out the add, mull, x, y, and z lines. So I'm going to void those out. Um, now going back into 2D, um, update here, that 2D symbol looks right. But I want to make sure that it's lined up, that I didn't mess anything up when I copy and pasted. So there's a command that you can add, project, two, three, and there's a space. So project two space three comma 270 comma two. Um, now if I overlay those two, you can see it updates here and I can tell that my backplate is perfectly in line with my uh, 3D object. So it's, it's aligned back. Uh, the 2D symbol does project out further, but that's the, the symbolic view. I'm gonna null out this line. If I ever need it again, I don't have to recreate it. It's there. Um, now I'm going to go into my 3D script, and because I saved this whole thing based on that 000 origin, and I've gotten rid of these add commands so that the object does in fact live within that 00 um, component, I'm going to add a hotspot here. So I'm going to say hotspot 0, 0, 0. That's going to add a 3D hotspot, if we look at this in 3D, at the back of the base plate. So hotspot space 0, 0, 0 places a hotspot at x, y, z, 0 origin of this whole script. Um, you see the script here is, is relatively simple. Uh, just as an example, let me show you uh, what it would look like if I modeled this with morphs. So I'm going to copy the original shells over. I'm going to convert those to a morph. Say OK. And if we look at this in 3D, should look basically identical. There's two identical sconces there. One's with shells, one's made with morphs. Uh, if I were to save this from the morph object, file, libraries, and objects, save selection as object, and we'll just save that as a morph and say OK. And let's place that one. It still looks the same, but if I go into the object script here, there's going to be thousands and thousands of lines of script. 
So morphs are very inefficient at scripting objects. Uh, sometimes it is the best tool to model something with, but here this is even freezing up on me. If I look at my library manager, uh, it's a pretty simple object, so it probably is not terrible for the project either way. Um, but it's a difference of 97 uh, kilobytes for the shell extrusion versus 1.3 megabytes for the, so it's more than uh, 13 times larger for it to save as a morph in terms of file size contribution. Um, anyway, so that's a good example of why to avoid saving things as morphs if possible. Uh, sometimes it really is the best option. Um, so let's go back into here. We've got our hotspot. Uh, the rest of the script all looks good. We're good in 3D. Um, so we can uh, essentially from here just go file and save and close out of this. And here is that sconce. So this is the 2D and 3D sconce. If I do a marquee or select it and isolate it out in 3D, you'll see here that that sconce now has a hotspot directly at the back point. Um, the sconce is not stretchable, so the, the outer hotspots are fixed. Um, there are ways you can make this a little bit more malleable, but for right now, just basic the basic file save as, add a hotspot, and then copy and paste that 2D script into the 3D script. Uh, the parameters are listed here. If I needed to rename anything, I could. Uh, I can also void out, since it's not stretchable, there's no way to resize it, I can void out, so adding the display option, getting rid of the A, B, and Z, Z, Y, Z, X lines, make sure that you're not punching in numbers here and, and getting frustrated that there's no effect. Uh, there's also this use stored environment. Um, I just null that out too, it confuses things. Um, you can technically null out the building material, but sometimes if you copy and paste this or place it into a file that doesn't have a building material attribute number 37, it'll report an error that that's gone missing. Um, and then once you're done and ready to share this to other projects or dump it into an office library, you go uh, from this, this uh, object editing window, the tab, uh, you go to File, Save As, uh, put it on your desktop, put it on a file server, put it wherever it needs to go so that it can be shared. Uh, so I will share this up uh, either as a link or on the Slack group uh, BIM channel uh, along with a link to this video. Uh, for now, I'm just going to save this to my desktop as Bryant Sconce. Uh, the format is Archicad object file and say save. And that's all there is to it.